Next speaker <clears throat> is going to be uh, one of our patient advocates, K. Michael Cooper. After graduating from Stanford University with a BA and MBA, he was running a very successful business and turning around companies which were in uh, uh, troubles. Prior to venturing out on his own, he worked closely with Stan Hiller for a number of years. Since his recovery as a stroke victim, he decided to produce a product to aid patients suffering from apraxia, that is the inability to perform fine movements. So now we'll have uh, Mr. Cooper. Thank you. I had my stroke on Thanksgiving morning, uh, 2003, and was taken to uh, Sequoia Hospital. While waiting with my wife, Mika, my heart went into atrial fibrillation. And then code blue came on suddenly and loudly over the intercom. The, my wife was uh, pushed out of the room. And I was rushed to the ICU where they inserted a temporary pacemaker IUD to keep my, me alive. That day, the hospital saved my life twice. I spent one week at Sequoia Hospital and the next three weeks at Stanford Hospital for rehab. My right size, side was paralyzed and I was unable to swallow or speak. My wife had read that the first six months are very crucial to a stroke patient as the brain has the best ability to rejuvenate. She kept telling me that I only had six months to get better. Talk about pressure. <laughs> of course, we know better today. Recovery can take some time, but improvement can be measured every day. From day one, she visited my, me three times a day and started lifting my arm and leg 12 times. Then she tried singing happy birthday with me, but we gave up on that because she has a terrible voice. <laughs> However, we brought, uh, she brought a m m music tape with songs from the Beach Boys thinking I might know those songs and that somewhere in my brain there would be recognition. She also brought papers and books because I, I could read. She also had to take care of my business because as CEO of a software company, a lot needed to be arranged. When I got tired, she would give me a small break, but not too much. The wife, my wife did not give up on me and I shared in their determination, I did not want to give up myself. She asked if the nurses, if I could have a walker instead of wheeling myself to the lunch in a wheelchair. At lunch, we often met with wives or children of other st stroke survivors and she noticed that they, they would help them with their food, cutting it up or feeding them. My wife let me struggle and make a mess because unless something became t t hard for me to do, do uh, uh, she felt that I had enough pride not to be, become an invalid. She also noticed that many uh, visitors would simply just sit at uh, their loved one's bedside in their room and trying to do some of the things that have, may have helped my recovery. Also in the first few weeks of recovery, she, we would play a kind of a scrabble game. She would ask me to spell out the name of a car make or a dog breed, anything to keep my brain working. 
we went outside for walks together, together, and I would give her my cane after we passed the nurse's station and just walk along holding on to her hand for balance. The therapists at Stanford Hospital were very nice and really motivated me with speech and physical uh, exercises. They were always so upbeat. When OPT found out that I had lots of stairs to come home to, they made me practice walking up and down the stairs at the hospital. I was released on Christmas Eve of 2003. It was the best Christmas present I've ever been given. It took a while before I was able to look up with a uh, hookup with a speech pathology to, uh, to work on my apraxia. And in the interim period, my wife arranged for in house speech and more rehab exercises. For the physical part, I worked at cardio rehab in Mills Peninsula Hospital. After I graduated from there, I was allowed to work out at 24-hour fitness, a gym where I had been a member for many years. There I spin, uh, work out with weights, and do freestyle biking. About six months after the, my stroke, I walked the Bay to Breakers race in May 2004, seven and a half miles. As I had run it for 20 years in a row before my stroke, and I didn't want to lose my unbroken record. My wife, who normally runs with me, didn't want to attend this one. She told me if I wanted to kill myself, I could do it without her being present. We both ran together some other races for the next few years, but retired last year. I'm a Peninsula Stroke Association peer visitor, visiting stroke survivors in the Peninsula Hospital in Bur Burlingame to try to tell them of my positive recovery. I visit, I, I visit Reach in uh, Foothill College uh, uh, sp speech program. I continue to work with my aphasia group and in my fifth year of attending Toastmasters. Most people are trying to come up with speaking skills I'm going down the ladder, but we still meet up in the same place. <laughs> My goals are to become, once again, a consultant to CEOs and maybe to become a CEO myself one day. For my speech rehab, I was introduced to a speech pathologist at Mills Peninsula. There he has developed a system which he called the sound card system and after each session, he sent my wife and I home with our homework, which we practiced two or three times a day. Because I felt that this system really helped me to approve my speech, together with my wife, Mika, and the speech pathologist, we developed a product called Mianto's Sound Card System. And just in April, we launched it at the California Speech and, and Hearing uh, Association show. So my goal of becoming a CEO again has not been too far off. Thank you for listening. So our future is indeed bright if we can marry the determination and courage of patients like uh, Michael Cooper with the tremendous uh, opportunities in the stem cell transplant leadership of Dr. Gary Steinberg. 
Listen, thank you very much, Dr. Steinberg.